Welcome to the Elevated Trader Podcast. I am Dr. Kristen Kidgel. And I am Tracy Ball. Join us every week as we journey into becoming better traders. We believe becoming better traders involves elevating our skill, mindset, and our health. In each episode, we will discuss the current book we are exploring, and we invite you to join us on this journey. Are you ready to elevate your trading, mindset, and health to the next level? Let's do this. Welcome to part three, The Complete Turtle Trader, How 23 Novice Investors Became Overnight Millionaires. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. All right, so <laughs> this chapter is titled The Philosophy, and I just want to start out by saying the quote at the beginning here by Sherlock Holmes, which I, I, it's one of the quotes that I like, not necessarily about the book, it didn't stand out, but I do want to talk about it. And that's, when you have eliminated the impossible, what remains, whatever remains, however improbable must be the truth. And I know this kind of goes a little bit introspective, a bit more, it's, it's philosophical. Well, it is Sherlock Holmes, the guy who played Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Okay. So, and there's, and there's context there. For sure. There's context there, but I find that it's, the reality is the most obvious issue. We tend to overlook it on a regular basis because we want things to be more complicated. We don't want them to be simple. We don't want them to be easy. And yet the easy is usually the most logical answer. And in troubleshooting, that is one of the things that, that can, I'll tell you a story. Okay. And this is, this is a, I won't use any real names, but <laughs> I came home one day and one of my exes was tearing apart the garage door completely apart. The mechanics, all the, the stuff was apart. And I'm going, what are you doing? And he responds, the garage door is doing something funny. I'm trying to fix it. I'm like, okay. I walk into the house. I go to make dinner. I continue doing all that. It was about an hour, hour and a half later, I come back and he's still tearing this thing apart. But now there's screws laying all over the place and what have you. And, and the reality, I said to him at that point, I said, so what exactly is this thing doing? He says, well, every time I hit the button, it's, it's, it's kind of jumping as it's trying to open. It's, it's resistance. There's resistance in there that's keeping it. It's just going bam, 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 all the, all the way up. It's just jittery as it's going up. So I, with fresh eyes, okay, fresh eyes, no blinders on, no preconceived bias, stand there for a second, listen to the problem, think about it, look to where the springs are on the door and I see a piece of metal sitting against the spring. And that piece of metal was hitting the spring as the door was moving. And that was what was causing the jittering. He wasted three, four hours of his time trying to solve a problem because he put a bias on already that said there must be something wrong here that mm -hmm. kept him from seeing the problem in a very simplistic way. Mm -hmm. And we do this all the time. Right. I'm not trying to repeat this story to make fun of him because that's not what I'm trying to do at all. Right, right, right. It's a very clear example of how we can put blinders on and look for something somewhere that it isn't there because we make it more complicated than it needs to be. I find this happens in trading, the same thing. When we do an analysis, we, we say, oh, this is, and we put a bias this is going to go long, or this is going to go short, or this is what it's going to do. And we put this bias in place, and then we try and, and news and this and yeah. that, which he hated. Yes, Dennis Richard Dennis. Exactly. And then what we try to do is we try and force our surroundings into our preconceived notion of what it should be, and it doesn't turn out, and we wonder why. And we're overcomplicating things. We're not. We're not. This is not about having a crystal ball. Trading is not about having a crystal ball. It's not about trying to figure out where the market's going to go or what it's going to do. That's not what it's about. It's about coming up with some plans about how you're going to interact with the market as it does this and as it does that. It's a dance and you're letting the market lead and you need to follow. It's not the other way around. You're not choosing the dance and forcing the market to come with you. It's the other way around. So we need to, to grasp that. And he's very good at, at determining that. And that's one of the things that I love about his, his entire philosophy 
which is why this chapter is called The Philosophy, around mm-hmm. life and the way that he approaches the markets and how he brings that into this. So that was my take on it. Well, I found it interesting that they actually mentioned something that you kind of learn in high school. I'm pretty sure we are taught the term uh, scientific method. Mm -hmm. And so basically they used a scientific method, so to speak, in the two-week training. Mm -hmm. So it kind of says, simply put, the scientific method is a set of techniques for investigating phenomena and acquiring new knowledge, as well as for correcting and integrating previous knowledge. It's based on an an observable, empirical, measurable evidence and subject to the laws of reasoning. That's a mouthful. It is. But but it's not a hunch. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Okay. It's not my intuition. That's right. And this this is what I encourage traders to do all the time with back trading. That is your scientific method in back trading, right? And Dennis and Eckert were adamant that their students consider themselves scientists first and traders second. And that Love it. I think is really key. And when you approach it that way, it it puts a different perspective, a different paradigm shift, or it gives you a paradigm shift, I should say, into how you approach it. It changes the glasses that you're viewing what you're doing to something totally different. Right. right. So yep. no, definitely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So basically, if we were to relate this to trading, since it is a trading book, even though it doesn't really say that here in these, you know, the scientific method and the seven steps that are involved in whoever created the scientific method, um, it it really just boils down to your plan, testing your plan. Yeah, absolutely. And he already did. He knew his plan was good. He's like, this is my plan. This is my money. You go. You go now. He knew that to be successful, you had to create rules. And anything, he knew that. yeah, yep. he knew that. And that was the thing that he passed on. And I think it's really, I want to read this part because I, I like this part too. Some of these guys I read about have a different system for each market. That's absurd. We're trading mob psychology. We're not trading corn, soybeans, soybeans, or S&P. We're trading numbers. And I, I, I really think that that, is a testament into the way that he viewed the markets, period. He could see it in the most simplistic way because it had nothing to do with what the actual commodity was. It had to do with just the basics of supply and demand. He he was able to bring it down. And, and you know what really is intriguing to me? A lot of guys that I have met in my life that are really intelligent like this, like I'm talking, because I think he's genius level intelligence. Mm-hmm. They have a very difficult time simplifying concepts. Mm. And I think he was the opposite of that. He was not only intelligent and, and genius, and this is probably what made him intelligent and genius to a degree, was his ability. It makes him unique, that's for sure. His ability to simplify it into its organic um, base molecules. Which helps in an experiment. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It also made him a good teacher. Right. I can imagine that. Even though I think he spent a lot of time on the philosophy philosophy part, you know, the the mindset part, because he was so huge into that. You know, one of the things that jumped out in this chapter was to remind ourselves that he didn't invent this trend following way. You know, it's, uh, you know, not the buy low, sell high thing, which we already talked about, which was going against the grain then, Mm -hmm. but he wasn't the inventor of it. And I think this book, you could almost think that he was, but they do go back and just say, listen, yeah, they clarify it. Let's declare, let's clarify that, um, you know, it wasn't, it was that Richard Donchain. Am I saying that right? Uh, I think so. Close enough. I don't know how to to pronounce his name. Yeah. I think it's Don Sheen. I I thought this was really cool too, because he says, uh, since his early twenties that he had known that looking at news for decision-making cues was the wrong thing to do. If acting on news, stock tips, and economic reports were the real key to trading success, then everyone would be rich. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that he was in his mid to late twenties, multimillionaire from trading. For sure. We cannot forget that. I mean, he he was young. Yeah. And he's made hundreds of millions, by the way. Uh, And then the core axioms, which I like. So this, this was the core philosophy of the turtles. This is what they had okay. to adapt. Do, I like it. Do not let emotions fluctuate 
with the up and down of your capital. Be consistent and even-tempered. Judge yourself not by the outcome, but by your process. Know what you are going to do when the market does what it is going to do. Every now and then, the impossible can and will happen. Know each day what your plan and your contingencies are for the next day. What can I win and what can I lose? What are probabilities of either happening? I love these rules. In fact, I think I'm going to add all of them into my training plan because I, I like that. I think, I mean, I teach a lot of this stuff already, and but not in this way. This, this is so concise and defined in exactly what I believe as well. So I, I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> yep. I'm a fan. I can, I can see you. I can see you doing it <laughs> or just, you know, and simplifying it, like, you know, being consistent and even tempered, you know, I would suppose that's something that may not be in your plan and should be. It makes me think how important it is that we are reading the mindset books mm. You know, like, for example, like the Miracle Morning and, and thing, you know, that was really about getting your mindset, you know, set and calm out of the gate every day. Mm -hmm. So, no, for sure. And then I like how each turtle has to be able to answer the following questions. What is the state of the market? What is the volatility of the market? What is the equity being traded? What is the system or the trading orientation? And what is the risk aversion of the trader or client? These were all very, I mean, they're, they're very specific. And because they're very specific questions, it's really easy to fit that into a trading plan. And it's really mm -hmm. easy to form rules around those questions. That's what I really like. I, I, it's, I don't necessarily trade the way that he trades or follow this particular system, but I, I certainly like his, his philosophy around it. I definitely do. I really appreciate the reminder of analyzing the volatility every day. Mm, yes. Because you, we, we definitely, well, I'll say me, definitely tend to forget how important it is to analyze that. I mean, we can go, ooh, it's a pretty volatile day, but we don't know an exact number. And they were, they had to have the exact figures and numbers for those things. Mm -hmm. Give them, give them specific data on that. And then I love, in essence, Eckert was saying that you are not special you are not smarter than the market, so follow the rules. <laughs> and there you go. It's that simple, right? That's the obvious part. He taught, right. it's, he, taught, he taught them to wake up and say, I'll do what my rules say to do today. Amen. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that should be like literally, I have to figure out how to put that on the top of like my main screen of the computer. <laughs> I'll I'll do what my rules tell me to do today. It says here if the turtles lost money in in a market, they had to move on. Accepting and managing losses are part of their game. Yeah, well this this trading strategy only had like a 40% win rate, something like that. Mm. But the wins were so big, the losses were so small that that's what made it profitable. And you need to cuz again, this is um trading is all about numbers. It's all about odds and yep. balancing those odds and putting them in your favor. So knowing the math behind that can significantly impact how you trade. It can, it can fix that. If you've got a, you know, an 80% win rate, you don't have to control your, your, you don't need to make sure that your losses are really, really small. You can, you can lose a little bit more. You have the ability to lose a little bit more because that 80% is going to counteract as long as you're winning more than you lose. Right. You'll be profitable. Same with 50 50. As long as you're winning more than you lose, you're good to go. But the minute you start falling below that 50% mark, you really have to start looking at those numbers to make sure that you're profitable. Right. And, and if you're getting like a six to one ratio, then, then that's great. You can, you can go down to a 30 or 40% success rate for your trading and, and be okay with that kind of a ratio and you'll be profitable. You know, I have to tell you, there's something else in this chapter that really jumps out at me. What's that? And I, I don't think I've ever heard this said before. A lot of these things we've heard before in different contexts from different people in different ways, but I don't think I've ever heard this one before. The turtles were taught not to fixate on when they entered a market. They were taught to worry about when they will exit. Mm. Now, granted, where's your stop? Where's your target? But 
And where's your entry? To me, in my brain, all three of those carry equal weight. Mm. This was different here. It sounds like he's making it more, more weight on where are you exiting? But maybe that's because it's the trend following. Mm. Maybe it could be, but I, I put a lot of emphasis on stop placement. Exit is, I think, very crucial as well. Mm-hmm. I, I actually put more emphasis on that than I do my entry. In fact, when I'm trading, the first thing that I pick is where my stop needs to be. Yeah, I, I think it's all in my mind. It's like, okay, well, where's that going to be? And where's that? I mean, it's to me, you can't not look at all of that. Mm-hmm. That definitely delays how, you know, when you're going to, place the trade even on. No, I completely agree. But I will look at my stop first. Where's my stop mm-hmm. got to be? Where do I want to get in? And then I'll assess it. And I can adjust my entry within a zone because there's an area where I want to get in. It doesn't need to be a specific price. But the fail point is the fail point for me. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. If it fails, it fails. So I definitely right. want my stop there. That's a fixed location. I am not going to adjust my stop to get a better risk reward. I'll adjust my entry to get a better risk reward. There you go. Right? Love it. Yeah. So I I actually, there was another part in here that I really found intriguing and it's the concept of adding to a winner and adding to a loser. That's something else that I got out of this book. Now, okay. Uh, I've heard a lot of people use the terminology pyramiding in and it's generally mm-hmm. pyramiding into a loot technically a losing position. You're buying on the way down. Now, I did just recently do a video on how to do the math for that, to do it correctly so that you're not actually adding to a loser. It's a planned position because you can't pick the bottom. But through Investopedia, pyramiding is technically buying on the way up. It's it's in, it's in uh, dollar cost averaging up, not dollar cost averaging down. That is technically the term for pyramid py- pyramiding in. And... Um, I wanted to make it very clear that when you are pyramiding down, okay, that is a planned, very specific strategy that you're doing where the risk is known. And like I said, I've done a video on how to calculate the math behind that so that you know what the risk is. The max I'm going to lose on that trade is one R still because of the way that I do it and how I plan the position. Other people though, they'll get into a position and they're losing because they aren't using a stop and they will transition from say a day trade into a swing trade into that massive loser. It turns into a bigger loser. So then they start to buy into that position thinking I'm going to, I'm going to reduce my dollar cost average, which is going to lower my risk, which is going to get me out of this position to begin with. I'll be able maybe I'll get better. And they just keep putting money in, keep putting money in, keep putting money in, they keep dollar cost averaging down. And the problem with that, with that is at some point, if this continues to go down, you're going to run out of money and you're not going to be able to continue to do that. And at some point, you're going to have to count your, your loss as a loss, and that's going to be what it's going to be. Or you're going to get lucky, and it's going to turn around and reward you for behavior that really was risky and not advisable in any way, shape, or form. Dennis said that to add to a losing position was like being a kid who's been burned on a hot stove once already, but puts his hand back on the stove just to prove it was the stove that was wrong. (laughs) I love the saying, and I I think it's really applicable. And I want to make sure that people understand that there is a difference between a calculated strategy of buying into a losing buying on the way down. I'm not even going to call it a losing position because it's not a losing position. You're deliberately scaling into a position, knowing exactly where you're going to do it and what you're going to do and where your stop's going to be and how you're going to protect that position throughout the whole process. Versus, Which is typically more long-term investing, not necessarily swing, Yes, yep. which is what he was known for. Yes. So. And, and to do it the other way, to just scale into a losing position because you're trying to get out of something, because you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole, is... Totally not. Just cut your losses, accept it, move on, move your ego out of it. And otherwise you are just a kid being burned by a (laughs) stove and you're trying to prove that the stove is wrong. (laughs) Do you remember when, um, I don't know, it's been a week or so when I said that I, I'm going to go, I went onto Google and I look, I tried to find a, an article and an image that was mentioned in the book. And there was a picture of him that was used, I think in, um, in an article and so the picture was him at his desk and behind him. Do you remember what oh. the 
with the thing on the piece of paper said behind him? I don't remember, but I do remember seeing it. What was it? It again? says losers add oh. to losers. Yes, that's right. <laughs> losers add to losers. I forgot that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, for sure. And that was right on his wall that he'd see every single day. Every day. Yeah, for sure. Big. Like, I think it was like, I don't think it was like a huge poster, but it was big enough that it was as big as his head in the picture. That sums it up. <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up. So, no, I I, uh, I really like that. So this, we're getting into um, the next chapter or two, which is going to talk about the rules and the math behind it. And that's kind of the meat and potatoes. And so we'll see you in the next episode. Okay. See you. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about the show, as well as our list of current reads, check us out at www.theelevatedtrader.com. Remember to subscribe and share if you found value in today's episode. See you next week.